It is very icy out this morning, which is also a good reason to bring along some friends. Because that way you can wait in the nice warm car while they clean the windshield for you. <laughs> Good morning, welcome to another morning. It's very cold this morning because it snowed a lot last night and yesterday and finally we get a chance to go out to a new place today so I wanted to take us to a secret place that I found. It's a beautiful lake so hopefully we'll get a chance to get there safely without any snow or any problems on the road and get a chance to uh, experience another different part of this area up here in the Dolomites. Off we go. I want to take just a second to stop because I saw a cool castle. Look at this. So we're gonna stop here for just a minute and take a few awesome pictures of this really, really cool castle on the side of the road. We have made it to the beautiful lake. Look at this incredible place. Completely covered in snow and some of the lake is even kind of frozen, but hopefully we'll get a chance to take a few pictures with a little bit of calmer water, maybe be able to get a reflection of the mountain in the lake. So one of the things that I wanted to teach Kevin on this trip was how to use a filter that he's never really used before. That's the circular polarizing filter. It goes on the front of the lens and allows you to actually control by just turning it, the polarizer, and control or how much reflection you want on the surface, in this case of the water. So by turning it you can actually reduce the reflection, see clearer into the water. You can see it here as I'm showing you turning the polarizer filter, you can see how it's affecting less or more reflection. So like I said, we're gonna use this filter today to try and capture this scene perfectly. So we can see just a little bit into the water and see some of those rocks underneath, but still capture a nice reflection of the mountain. So you got your uh, polarizer filter put on? Yeah. Awesome, well said. Well, then we'll probably just go with some normal settings like F8 and just leave the uh, shutter speed to pick it automatically. I usually like to shoot outdoor landscapes in either ISO 100 or ISO 200. So we'll put it there for today and take some awesome shots of this mountain. So like I said, Kevin, you just want to get down at about this angle so you get a nice angle to have the reflection. Really reflects the mountain perfectly. It's kind of the same size and relationship. And also, this way is a good opportunity to use the circular polarizer to reduce just enough of that reflection from the sunlight to be able to see some of the cool rocks that are right here and even some of the fish that are here too. I just noticed those. We found a really cool little local place here on the side of a really back road actually. <laughs> and it serves completely local food from this area in the northern northeast part of Italy. 
So we're gonna have an awesome lunch with some things that I've never heard of, like ox pasta. So it has ox in it and um, some kind of other appetizer thing that has some liver or something in it. I don't know, you might be freaking out and saying, ooh, that sounds gross, but when you're here, you've gotta try the local cuisine, so we're super excited to try it, including the local bread, which they usually serve at the table. Sometimes you have to pay for it, sometimes it's included, but either way, it's worth it, and you should always have the bread because it's always great. Right, Kevin? Let's see. So this one is some kind of tagliatelle with them. Not sure if it's real blood that they used or if it just says blood. But anyways, um, it's like a red color, so it should be good. Then we have some meatballs, but I guess the proper name for them would be canoodle. Canoodle. Liba canoodle. Liba canoodle. Liba canoodle. We have some ravioli with what? Isenschwanz and parmesan. Which means? I don't know. Oh, we don't know what that one Ox is either. Tail. Ox tail. And parmesan. Wow. It looks a lot more majestic than it sounds. There's the ox tail. Mmm. Yeah, the ox tail is good. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm gonna go ahead and try this one now. You Smells like blood. You want to taste? It's good, thanks. Doesn't quite taste like blood. It's very good though. It's very good. One thing I have definitely never done is gone to like a Home Depot store in Italy. But we need to get a few things, so I found this store called Obi, which is the Italian version of, or I guess kind of European version of Home Depot. And one of my favorite things in Italy are the water fountains that you find in all the cities. Well, I actually found that you can buy them here and have your own at your house, which would be really, really cool. Nice sharp saw, plenty of saws to pick from. They have all the power tools that you would normally have in Italy, except they're arranged by color, which is pretty interesting. So if you look on the wall behind me, you'll see there's orange, yellow ones, and green ones over there, more green ones. Over there is a whole bunch of just blue ones. Everything is just color coordinated. These are all different gray ones. So I guess you pick it based on your, um, on your outfit. Have just found a no parking sign in Italian. Also private property sign, which is pretty cool. And, and then this sign you know is in German because it has a German shepherd on it. Found the perfect one to put on the bathroom at home. Toilette. So we are in a grocery store now. A much bigger grocery store than I have ever been in. And they have everything including some fresh little tomatoes. Oops, almost dropped it. So when I want to decide on an olive oil in the United States, we have maybe one or two good options. Here is an entire aisle of just obviously Italian olive oil to pick from. None of them are three ounces though to take on the plane so definitely a problem. So Adam, where are we going? Well, I am going to take you to the official photo spot of the Dolomites. I've got the menu set up for or the GPS coordinates set up in my phone and I'm going to take you there now because in about Half an hour, 45 minutes, should be a perfect sunset. And we get a chance to take the iconic Dolomite photo. So are you excited? I am. Good. Let's go. for an absolutely perfect sunset. Well, we got a few clouds, so we're at least gonna set up for a quick photo here. 
So Kevin, what I recommend is that we first put on kind of a wide angle lens, all right? Because this is a really nice wide angle photograph to take. A lot of the landscape to incorporate. We've got a beautiful church down here. Iconic church here in the Dolomites. Of course, the Dolomites themselves and this beautiful uh, rolling hills throughout here. So I want to capture that. So maybe we'll try something around 24 millimeters, 30 millimeters, somewhere in there, so that we have a nice wide angle lens to start with so we get a whole landscape. I'm completely out of breath now and very cold. I think it's like 30 or 29 degrees up here. Kevin had the idea, thought it was a good idea, instead of being way down there where we were, to come up this steep hill, extremely steep hill, and get up a little higher. Well, it turns out that we are actually now next to a big pile of poop. So thank you, Kevin, for the what great the idea. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna set up here take a few quick shots. I'm going to go ahead and say good night for today. We have had a fun, awesome day doing a ton of stuff and I can't wait for tomorrow. It'll be an awesome day. So for now, ciao. Ciao.